Hello and welcome. Um, this is just going to be a very basic tutorial regarding materials on Blender. Um, bear in mind, Blender now is starting to use the Cycles renderer as well, which is producing some amazing realistic results. However, the examples I'm going to be giving here basically only work with the Blender render, which is the render engine that comes with Blender. So, in this example, I'm just going to be looking at a simple sphere and going to be applying some materials and creating some effects on those materials to produce different types of materials to show you, the user, how to do this. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure that the object you want to apply the materials to is actually selected. So, you simply move your mouse over the object and right hand mouse click over the object. You will see this orange highlight around the object and that's indicating that that object has been selected and that's exactly what we want to do. On the right hand side here where my cursor is you'll see various tabs. The tab that we want to go to to start off with is this tab here that's known as materials. It makes sense. You want to change the material of the object you go to the materials tab. So we click on that once. At the moment, there's no materials added to the object. So to do this, we simply click on the New button, just like that. And by default, Blender makes the material this white color, slightly off-white. It's not 100% white, just slightly off-white. So if I go and render this scene by pressing F12 on my mouse, uh, sorry, on the keyboard, you will see that the object is this whitish color. Below the object you will see this dark color, but that's just a shadow produced from the lights. But the object itself is a slightly off-white color. If I press escape on the keyboard, I go back to my Blender scene. To change the color of this object is quite simple. Over here where my, where my mouse is now, you see, if you click on this white band here, which is the current color of the object, it will produce this color wheel. So to simply select the color for your object, say I want it to go green, I can just move my mouse along the color wheel until I say I like that color. Let go of it. Render the scene by pressing F12, and you see that my object has now become green. So. That's good, great. I've changed the color of my object. I'll escape again to go back to the Blender uh, object mode scene. Um, you'll also see down here what's known as specular. This basically represents this white dot where my mouse is at the moment, my cursor. A lot of objects, when light shines on it, produces this sort of dot on it and uh, reflects off the object. So if I was to cut, change this color, you'll see over here in the preview, and if I render the scene again, that these dots that are actually coming off the light themselves have changed to the slightly pinkish color because I've selected pink color. Generally speaking, white is the general color of, of light that people use in, um, in rendering scenes, so we will keep that at white. The intensity of it, if I move this up, you can see again the dot here where the light is shining has become more intense because I've moved the intensity up. So if I render it, you can start seeing the white dots are much more intense. So you can play around with the intensity of this uh, specular effect depending on what you're trying to render. So I'll just put that back to 0.5 where it was before. The hardness, if I say drop the hardness to zero, you can see what happens. But let me put it back to 50 very slowly. Okay, it's back to 50. Right, just a few seconds. Let me just put it back to 50. So we're back to 50. By dropping it, 
you can see that the actual hardness of this reflection of light starts to get more blurry and bigger. Again, it's depending on the material that you want for your object and depending on how you want the light to react on the object. And this is what happens when you vary the hardness. So I've dropped the hardness to 18. If I render it, you can see that the light sort of diffuses over the object more so than it was when it was set at 50. And vice versa, if I increase this to over 50, it becomes... So say I stick it to 100, render it, the dots become smaller and sharper. So that is what's happening there when you play around with the uh, specular effect. Now, I'm going to put that back to 50 where it was before. Say for example I wanted to make my object more glossy. If we look down here on the mirror and I open up that window and I select, I check the box to make it reflective. If I increase this reflection up, you can see up here on the preview that it's become shiny. It's reflecting more its surroundings. Everything around it is reflecting off the object. And if I render that, you can see it's actually reflecting the floor that the object is sitting on, becoming more shiny and more glossy. So that is what this reflection does. And of course, there's a lot of other factors here, the Fresnel and the blend effect and the depth, etc., that you can go into. But I'll let you play around with that a little bit more and uh, discover how it works yourself. The next thing I want to go to is actually um, remove the mirror effect. So I'll un uncheck that. So if I render it again, I'm back to just a plain green object. Now, if I wanted to make my object more of a transparent object, we look at the transparency here. We drop down the menu, select it, check it to activate it, and I would say go to ray trace here. Nothing seems to have happened to the preview, but that's because the alpha value is on 1. The more we drop the alpha value, the more transparent our object's becoming. So if I render it now, it's becoming transparent. It doesn't quite look like glass, it looks like a transparent plastic. I can increase it a bit more to make it less transparent, and you can continue increasing it even more to make it less transparent. Now, here, down where it says IOR, that actually stands for Index of Refraction. When you have glass, glass, light passes through the glass, but it also refracts. What that means is the light actually bends as it enters the glass, and then bends as it passes through it again. And if you were to play around with this value, say, let's drop it a little bit. Actually, I apologize, let's increase it. You can see the type on the preview, the type of effects it gets. It looks like the light is being reflected and then bent through it as it passes. So if I actually render that right now, although I must admit, in this case, it doesn't really look like glass. Glass is quite a hard material to get to look realistically in, in rendering. So you actually, you just keep playing around with it. Um, let me see now here. And if I actually drop the alpha to make it even more see-through and transparent, And actually, if I make the color white, because in this case, I want the glass to look crystal clear type glass. Uh, 
again it's not really looking like glass but you need to play around with these values until you get something that looks similar to it but you also have to bear in mind that glass also reflects so if you have other objects around your object so say you've got an object on your table that you want to look like glass and you've got other objects around it glass will reflect the other objects that are, that are around it now i don't have any other objects around my object so it's not really reflecting anything except the floor so that might be a reason why it doesn't look very glassy but you can see it looks sort of like glass um, You can also, by the gloss factor here, by dropping it, you can make your glass look almost like a smoked glass. So you can get this cool smoked effect as well by changing the gloss factor down there. As you can see, it's taking longer to render, but it's not. it's quite a cool effect actually. Well, I think so, at least. Now, as I said before, let me put the gloss back to 1, which means it's back to this glass effect. Add a mirror effect, because as we said before, glass also reflects. The, gla the light doesn't just pass through the glass and then bends. As we said, it refracts. It can pass through it and bend, but it also hits the glass and reflects back, similar to a mirror. So it's a bit of a reflection to that. You can start to see it's looking a little bit glassy. I agree it's not the best looking glass, but you get the general idea. You just play around with it until you get that stage where the glass looks just as you want it. I want to go back and remove the mirror effect and the transparency effect so that my object is now looking like a solid as you can see here in the render. Now our object was a green color before so we're going to go back to this green color and if I render it you see it goes back to green. If I wanted my object to look a fluorescent color Excuse me one second here, just trying to figure one thing out. Yeah, so if I wanted my object to look fluorescent, this is green, but I want it to look like a fluorescent green. The intensity here, I'm sorry, I've actually picked the wrong, um, the wrong factor here. Under shading, I apologize. Under shading where it says emit, this is going to, when you increase this value, it's going to make your object look more fluorescent, as though it's emitting a lot of light, like a fluorescent light. And as you can see when I render it, it starts to look quite fluorescent indeed. And obviously the higher you increase that value, the more fluorescent it looks. So that's another thing you can do. And that's that's the basics of introducing materials onto Blender. I hope it comes in handy. It's just a quick tutorial just to give you an idea and hopefully it will help out when it comes to adding materials to your models. Um, creating good 3D models is vital in order to model your part well, but also to add materials will just give it that extra dimension, that extra sort of uh, life to it. So uh, I hope this tutorial has come in handy and uh, good luck with your venture. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.